So the casting announcement last week of Shuti Gatwa as the 14th Doctor has been met with incredible acclaim from many people within the TV and film industry. Uh, many fans of Doctor Who are excited. Many fans of Sex Education are, of course, excited. There were some great interviews on the red carpet with uh, Liz and Mazimba uh, and also many other people as well. Uh, let's go to that first uh, red carpet interview as well. This was the first one done shortly after the announcement. Beauty, we saw the news earlier on. How long have you been sitting on this particular nugget and are you feeling excited, nervous? Tell us what's going through your head. Uh, feeling all of the above. I've known since about February. Yeah. Uh, so this was at 20 minutes past two in the afternoon. This is about an hour, less than an hour after the official confirmation broke. And he's on the red carpet with Rusty Davis, both at the BAFTAs because they've been nominated for It's a Sin and Sex Education. Yeah, so it's been, it's been tricky trying to keep this under wraps because I've got a very big mouth. But uh, yeah, we done it. We did um, it. We did it. It feels amazing. It feels really amazing, and it's a, it's a true honor. This role is an it's an institution, and it's so iconic, and it means a lot to so many people, including myself. And so it makes everyone feel seen as well. It's something that everyone can enjoy. And so I feel very grateful to have had the baton handed over, and I'm gonna try to do my best. Have you always been a big Doctor Who fan? Anyone that you particularly want to model yourself on, or of course do your own thing as well? Uh, I'm definitely going to do my own thing. Definitely, I think. I mean, they're all amazing. You can't. You can't pick. You cannot pick. Um, yeah, a fan of Doctor. I don't know who isn't a fan of Doctor <laughs> Who. I really don't know. So now, I do think this is a really diplomatic answer. Personally, of, by, by the answer and his expression there, I don't really think he's watched much, doc, much Doctor Who in the past. I think it was just a respect for the role, amazing, love all of the Doctors, but I am going to do my own thing. Uh, it'll be interesting to see in future if he does uh, channel any other specific Doctors in the past. I'm trying to get so I'm trying to... There we go. That's a much better one. But also, we've talked about this before. We've done a segment in the past about whether or not you should be a fan to play the Doctor, and I don't think you should. I think that's gatekeepery, and also what is the definition of a fan? I think that actors like Matt Smith and Christopher Eccleston, Jodie Whittaker, Sylvester McCoy, uh, John Pertwee, who were not fans of the show when they were cast as the Doctor, that did not limit them. Like of, of people like uh, Matt Smith, he took on the role of the Eleventh Doctor without knowing anything about the show, and then as research after it had been cast, he watched some Patrick Troughton. Jodie Whittaker had watched some David Tennant in the past, but she'd been told by Chris Chibnall to not watch any of the show before doing any filming. Christopher Eccleston was a massive Chad, and he was out playing sports or playing football when Doctor Who was on. Sylvester McCoy was doing uh, theatre performances on Saturday nights when Doctor Who was on, so he missed all of that stuff. So you don't need to be a Doctor Who fan or to channel any specific Doctors in the past to be a good Doctor. It's a diplomatic answer, but yeah, I think that he's maybe just been told to be diplomatic, which is absolutely fine, because if he says, oh, I've not watched any Doctors, he'll be, get torn apart, as Jodie Whittaker was, you know, undeservedly torn apart in the past. Like, it was it, it was a massive double standard. It was a, a phenomenal double standard. So, yeah, very excited to, to join the family. And Russell, what was it about Shooty that made you think he is the... <laughs> Mini Flack ATC, don't forget Hartnell. Oh yeah, Hartnell is like the original fake fan. Original fake fan. Person for the part. Yeah, he is talent. Talent, don't listen. Talent, it was the most blazing audition. It was our last audition. It was our very last one. We thought we had someone and then in he came and stole it. And <laughs> genuinely, I've, I've watched Sex Education, loved his work, didn't quite know what we were going to get until I was in the room. And, and meeting you since, Shooty, it's just going to be a joy. I'm properly, properly thrilled. It's going to be a blazing future. Of course, Jodie still has one big special to go. She's the current doctor for the next few months, so you don't want to, I know, say too much about the future. But where are you on planning your new doctor? And Taya says, you must tell RTD who is almost the doctor. Uh, I know that that's a very interesting question, but I also have learned in the past that it's it's quite a rude question to ask. Like, who, who do you want to name as second best? Who do you want to name as the silver or bronze medal? We'll never know. We'll know who is on the list, but I don't think we will ever know quite rightly in my opinion, who was that almost doctor before Shooty walked into the door. Yes, and Jody was told about a day, a day and a half before Shooty was announced, just so that she would know that this was happening, which is a courtesy that Christopher Eccleston did not get uh, back in 2005, unfortunately. Keep quiet, it's all going to happen in 2023. 
Okay, so if you scroll down into the comment section of this, this is from the Doctor Who uh, unreleased channel, uh, that you will find a lot of positivity here. You will find a lot of positivity here. However, when this video first dropped, there was a hell of a lot of racism and stuff in the comment section. That A lot of it has now been deleted. Some of it's still there. Here's just a snippet of it, because I saw this when the, the video dropped. Harris, uh, 15th Doctor will be Matt Lucas. Go to meet the political quota, and then perhaps Sadiq Khan, who's the London mayor. And when he's here, uh, 17th Doctor should be black, gay, and Muslim. Uh, Adrian Kale, absolute BBC woke garbage. Uh, Bin Emoji, congratulations to BBC and Rusty Davis. They finally managed to F up. There's a space there. What was left of the Doc 2 fan base? Alexander Sonnet. Wonder how he got the job. He must have a sore throat. Also racist and homophobic. Nice. Philip Jackson. How humiliating. Imagine getting a job because of the amount of melanin in your skin or because of your gender. Equity, of course, brings everybody down to the lowest possible denominator and usually ends in tears. Even though this is a comment uh, responding to an interview with Rusty Davis saying that he had an incredible audition, uh, that he blew them away based on the merit, apparently this guy just does not think that Shutigatwa could possibly have got here based on talent. Uh, Mutant Creeper, I don't know who isn't a fan of Doctor Who, Jodie Whittaker, since she's never watched the show. Talked about this earlier, massive double standard. Matt Smith never watched the show before. John Pertwee was not a fan of the show. Sylvester McCoy hadn't watched the show. Christopher Eccleston, etc. Uh, the author of man is still going woke still going to go broke uh, because it, this is 2016 still apparently paul says congratulations to the bbc two box ticking appointments in a row but what else do you expect from the woke bbc yes the woke bbc who will not even let its employees go to gay pride parades uh massively a uh, woke institution there of course what we want to focus on first though before we talk about more of those disheartening reactions is the reactions that have come in from previous doctors because uh these folks in the comment section clearly aren't, fi aren't real fans they don't know a real doctor if they see one but we do have people like Sylvester McCoy who gave a very wonderful and heartfelt message to Shooty Gatwa let's take a look welcome Shooty Gatwa welcome to our unique club the Doctor Who Club you are very welcome and we'll be delighted to watch you take on the uh, Daleks the Cybermen the Weeping Angels and the Critics <laughs> we all had to do that when we took over. Anyway, I wish you well. I wish you everything you wish for yourself in the TARDIS. I hope you have great adventures. I know you will. I had. All the best, mate. All the best. I look forward to meeting you someday. Bye. Another Scott. Wee! This is a terrific video, but he's also a helicopter, apparently, which I absolutely love. Uh, so, yeah, and Shooty, on his social media, uh, did a response to this. Sylvester McCoy, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your beautiful message. It means the absolute world, especially coming from a fellow Scot. <laughs> especially coming from a fellow Scot. Um, I am so looking forward to to facing all of those foes, especially the last one that you mentioned. And the support from you and all the other doctors has just filled me with the strength that I will be able to do that. Thank you so much for welcoming me, welcoming me into the family. It means the world. Sylvester, you're a gentleman. All the best. Uh, unheard sirens in the chat. Doctor Who is hiring helicopters now, such won't be yes. uh, We also got uh, Peter Capaldi, fellow Scott, uh, weighing in. What a great story. A little boy whose family escaped from the genocide in Rwanda in 1994 and at age two finds refuge in Scotland where he grows up to become Doctor Who. That's a story to be proud of. With his huge talent and heart, I know Shooty will make an amazing Doctor. We also have Colin Baker. Uh, who tweeted out, I've been away filming and returned to find we have a new doctor. Uh, Makuti, welcome to the surgery. Uh, from what we've al we've already seen, you're going to have a blast and so are we. Enjoy. Uh, he spelt Shuti's uh, name, which is spelt N-C-U-T-I, uh, with an M, and he responds to that, Apologies to Shuti, I misspelt your name in my last tweet. Doe, I'm having my cataracts done on Monday, so I do have an excuse. Sorry, call me Dolin. And naturally, the correction tweet has more likes than the actual original tweet itself, because this is Twitter, and that's just how things work here. We also have Matt Smith in, uh, in here as well. I, 
I'm gonna wait and see. For the moment, I'm really curious. I'm, uh, oh. I think it's gonna be I, interesting. I think he's gonna be brilliant. I think. So. I think he's gonna be think truly gonna be brilliant. brilliant. I think it's an inspired piece of casting, yeah. and along with Russell, who's you know such a, a great leader of that show. But I think Kanguti is. I mean, he, I, I don't know if he's. So he does uh, mispronounce his name, but you know. To be fair, I only knew that his name was pronounced Shooty Gatwa because somebody very kindly in my Discord server told me before I recorded the video, which I massively appreciate. But yeah, still, yeah, the sentiment's fine. And if you've, if you've only read it before hearing it said out loud, that's absolutely fair enough. I've seen him in um, Sex Education. There's a warmth and wit and a real depth to his talent that I think is... Um, I, 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 honestly, I think it's an inspired bit of casting, and I'm really, really excited for the show. Anyone that says we've all done that in the past week. Uh, yeah, even when I was at the lunch table with my wife when we saw the news, I pronounced it in, in shooty, in cooty. I think that's what I first said when I read it out loud on my phone. And then, like I said, someone in my Discord server uh, very kindly told me uh, before I recorded the video. I think he's going to be a cracker. I can wait to see him too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there we go. Matt Smith thinks he's going to be white. He's going to be a cracker. Oh, boy. Oh, that's going to get me in trouble. Hey, let's wish him luck, okay? Yes. Nice. Good luck to him. He'll be brilliant. Yeah. Good luck to him. Yeah. So yeah, I think this was done at a like French convention or a French film festival uh, during a Q and A, and somebody just said it's been uh, announced. What do you think? Vous avez tous vu l'annonce aujourd'hui. Brilliant. You'll be brilliant. Okay. But for those who n'ont pas vu l'annonce, <laughs> tant pis pour vous. <laughs> The fall, yeah. the fall of the 11th racist mass. Yeah, we're going to cancel Matt Smith. Um, but High Vulture says, has Peter Davison said anything? Not as far as I'm aware. Uh, and MB Gamer, I wonder if Chris Eccleston made a response to Shooter Gat was casting. Um, no idea. I, I don't think so. If anyone has, feel free to drop him in the chat. Uh, but these uh, I, I, these ones that I'm showing are the only ones that I'm currently aware of. Um, I'm sure Jody will have a statement in due course as well. We have the doctors coming in force to show their support and their love for Shooty Gatwa. But some people who saw the casting of Shooty Gatwa and Sight Unseen were just absolutely flipping their shit. Uh, naturally, we do have Bolstrek as well, uh, threatening to leave Doctor Who for the 50th time on Twitter. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Rusty Davis and the 14th Doctor for doing less in six hours what Chibs tried to do for five years. Uh, you have completely destroyed this fandom. You couldn't go six hours without making this about identity politics. I'm out. Many are out. Great work. Middle finger emoji. Uh, and also, just to translate, uh, without making this about identity politics, which is translation for casting a black person, uh, I understand that Bolstrek did make his account private uh, shortly after this and i do want to say that it's because his dog passed away and he just doesn't want to focus on online stuff which yeah it sucks it's very sad that his dog passed away uh because uh he's very close to his dog that's absolutely fine like for him to take some time away but you know what else is really really shitty being a fucking nazi so i have no sympathy there but returning back to this red carpet video some of the comments that uh, i showed earlier but many of them have actually been deleted uh but this was from reggie watts uh, i screen capped it while i was away uh, it feels really exciting, part of a program that pushes a narrative, quoted from an NPC, so calling him an NPC. Uh, he enjoys being part of a program that, quote, pushes a narrative. Yep, I bet he does. It makes everyone feel seen. Okay, the show can die now. Uh, so the Doctor is now a low-budget copy of Wesley Snipes. So this is just pure racism, because all black people look identical, apparently. BBC doing another virtue signal. But let's go to uh, some videos, some other responses that we've had to the casting. This is from Talk Radio. Uh, this is the uh, UK fake news outlet uh, run by Rupert Murdoch. This is uh, Julia Hartley He's Brewer uh, responding with guest charlie peters about the 14th doctor this is um it's called um julie hartley brewer's response to the first black doctor who but this is like three minutes and 45 seconds in because they're talking about um they completely misrepresent some anti-racism cringe courses that are happening uh in some uh counties across the uk they basically lie and misrepresent it but that's a whole other topic for another time uh but let's go to uh julie um julia hartley brewer's response with charlie peters as well Jordan, I must have also talked about another issue of race. And again, I don't know why it comes up. New Doctor Who. And I mispronounced his name earlier on. Apologies. I don't know any actors at all. I'm rubbish on these things. Uh, Shuti Gatwa. He's replacing Jodie Whittaker. First female Doctor Who. Uh, and now everyone's making great play of diversity because he's the first black Doctor Who. But again, why is it relevant? Is he a good actor? Will he be a good Doctor Who? That that should be the only thing we discuss. We're told we're sort of, you know, you know we're trying to move away from these things. But we seem to be obsessed with these things. 
So it's very interesting how the very first thing that she says in response to this casting decision is trying to construct a public, trying to construct a, uh, a straw man of uh, someone who's just obsessed with the race and the gender change. Like, over the course of this live stream, we've been going through the news stories, we've been going through the interviews and reactions from doctors and other people. It seems like the only people who are bringing race into this are the detractors. Like, the race has been just been said, yeah, he is the first black doctor. And that's kind of it. it has It's kind of been a little bit like a footnote. Like, that's it. They're the ones who are getting bent out of shape about this. But this isn't about reflecting reality. This is about reflecting a um, a, con a constructed narrative, a constructed public. It's a very like obvious reactionary like tactic. No, absolutely. And and the actor himself. I mean, he was born in Rwanda and raised in Edinburgh. So he's a Rwandan-born Britain. So I think of him as British. He is. He's from my country. He's one of me. Can I say, uh, didn't even occur to me that he wasn't British. Well, well, you, well that's the thing. You say that because you... Look at Julia trying so hard to virtue signal here. She's trying very, very hard. Well, right thinking and, and open-minded. However, plenty of people, when they saw that there was a new black doctor who rushed to Twitter to say, I bet Pretty Patel is so disgusted by the idea that there's a Rwandan-born <laughs> doctor who... I saw a tweet... Pretty about... Patel is the daughter of immigrants. Well, precisely. First things first, Julia, uh, I don't know why you've gone so quickly to the identity politics here, but yeah, sometimes people from marginalised groups or non-majority groups are able to use their influence and power to do harm to those same marginalised and uh, marginalised groups. For example, you do have like trans people like Blair White, you've got uh, people of colour such as uh, Candace Owens, etc. Uh, yeah, basically, just, just because you are part of a marginalised group or part of a minority group does not mean you can like you're instantly a great advocate for that group that's just how that works but julia is just here for the identity politics but when it comes to people having a knee-jerk reaction to pretty patel it's not like this has come completely out of nowhere first things first pretty patel was like policy in terms of immigration and in terms of uh refugees uh which um shoots out was parents were because they were fleeing a genocide uh has been so like barbaric and has been so inhumane that even the church of england called them out for it and basically the government response was the church of england are cooks that was basically the official government line like it doesn't matter that the church actually thinks that we are so uh deplorable it doesn't matter because god's a, 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 a libtard or something that was basically the official government response and also this con this current conservative government which depressingly pretty patel is a part of have been very vehemently anti-free speech, anti-press, anti-media, anti-BBC. So it's not like you have to work very hard to connect these dots. You have a black actor who may be gay, we don't know, who also um, is uh, the first non-UK born actor to play the Doctor, born in Rwanda, but uh, is, Scot is from Scotland, who is Scottish. And the government have a terrible policy when it comes to the treatment of those people. And because Rusty Davis is so anti-establishment, is so anti this government, it all completely makes sense. Like, these are dots that are very easy to connect together, but Julia's trying to be like... <laughs> like, she, she can't even convincingly feign the ignorance. Yeah, precisely, and this idea, this idea that if someone is born overseas and then comes to Britain and becomes... I'll tell you what, though, she would not make a very good actor. Like, Shuti Gatwa is able to get by on talent, but she is just really, really... She's phoning it in here. British. If they have a foreign background and they're not quite British, they are, again... <laughs> I don't know how people... Okay, so Charlie... I think he started that sentence, playing devil's advocate, he started that sentence not knowing where he was going to end it. He, he seemed to be veering very badly into the deep end here, and then Julia had to chime in and speak over him, which firstly, it's kind of rude to just talk all over your guest. But yeah, it was clear he was going to put his foot in his mouth, and Julia had to cut him off before they went against... We're trying really, really hard not to be racist here, okay? I know that we want to bring back slavery, okay? I know that that's what we want to do, but for this one, we really, really just want to act like we're, 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 we're going to be normal, okay? We're going to be anti-racist. That's the line we're doing. Charlie here almost gives the game away. Julia has to step in. Very funny. Just, I just don't know how people have the time to worry about these things. I mean, to be fair, I've not, I've not watched it since, you know, I was 10 years old. So, you know, I don't really care. But I don't understand why this stuff has to just be constantly mentioned. Well, they haven't ticked every box just yet. So we'll look forward to the trans Doctor Who next time around, right? That's probably the case, isn't it? Who knows? Might be already. We don't know. You're not allowed to question these things.
what a convincing way to show that you're not bigoted. Like, oh no, black people are okay as the doctor. Black people are okay. Those trans people we want to kill, though. Like, it doesn't really work for your argument or for your presentation. Like, your virtue signaling, like, in, a, in very different directions. It's really, really strange and frustrating. It would be like, oh no, we're okay with Jewish people. Those Muslims, though, oh no, we, we want them dead. Like, no, it kind of makes you think that you're not really being very genuine. Because it seems like the talk TV, the mandate for this segment, uh, it's, it's a really interesting game. Game. It wants to pretend to not be racist, and as we know, Talk TV is a massively racist uh, broadcaster. It wants to pretend to have absolutely no issue with non-white people in media, but it also wants to do this while simultaneously not giving that memo to the audience. The top comment, he was born in Rwanda, so he's not British, he's a Rwandan, this is just box uh, ticking woke nonsense. Uh, Doctor has been culturally appropriated. It sums up British TV, look at any TV program or any advert. Black and gay, ticking both boxes. Uh... Yeah, it's this is a outstandingly racist comment section. Toning Tony says uh, diversity hiring. Not bothered about your talent as long as you're black, uh, because this person does not think that black people being cast in media. Uh, if they were cast at all, then they are not talented. Black people are not talented. They can't possibly get by on merit. Because this is a story from like a week ago, I had to go to the original comments uh, quite early on. Let's go so for some highlights here that I found. Um, Billy the Wiz, a question to ask yourself, how is this going to end for indigenous Britons? John Smith responds, one way you can help, cancel the license, do it tomorrow, <laughs> like, like getting together for a bloody military operation or something. William Southall, I'm so sick of these vile anti-white racists infiltrating Britain. Alan Dickman, it's crazy, just watched adverts presenters changing all Leeds parts university. We are being replaced and called racist if we say anything shameful. Um... So apparently Shootergat was uh, casting as part of the Great Replacement Conspiracy Theory. We've heard Bolstrek talk about that in the past. Stephen Walton, it's all part of the population replacement plan. Brainwashing and social condi conditioning without any resistance allowed. Uh, Colin Peck here, this is what happens when you shag the writer who is into black men. Chinese haven't got a chance. BBC, they name is racist and hypocritical. Okay. Barry Anderson. So we have had a woman playing Doctor Who now, a black actor. Next will be gay. Next will be lesbian. Next will be non-binary, on and on and so forth. Like, some yeah, that, that could happen because those people exist and also act. Uh, Ivan says, repopulating this country without resistance is what's going on. Just look at the adverts on TV. Only be a matter of time before being white will be a crime. What matters is good actor, but stop with the woke. Try to get all the boxes ticked. Day Davis says the BBC has ticked every box. Black, tick. Gay, tick. Woke, tick. Liberal, tick. Immigrant, tick. Like, this is just unabashed, obvious racism. JC, black people can get away with saying anything these days. Shameful. Um, Janice Taylor, I was never a racist in the past, but I could be driven to it now. Oh, I was not racist in the past, but all these black people on TV may drive me to it. Then you were definitely racist in the past, Janice. Um, Ken Rilhull here. I wish coloureds would does be quiet. Ironically here though, Ken is actually the most articulate racist in this comment section. Uh, we've got another page as, uh, as well, because th this doesn't stop. Uh, Derek Bird, I haven't got a problem with him being black, but I do have an issue with him being given the job because he was black. Like I said, like Derek does not see black people as people. Derek does not see black people as a, like genuinely talented enough to actually get by on merit. The casting of a black person has to be treated immediately with skepticism that is the line black people cannot get by on merit they have to be like forced in it has to be forced diversity ac bbc black broadcasting corporation not even clever simon lieb not surprised totally predictable diversity led as always uh, steve standard they're deliberately stoking up division yes black people on tv are deliberately trying to divide and stoke people up by existing on tv uh, red factor one they will create racism if the left keeps stone going down the road of box ticking yeah they will <laughs> yeah people wanting to cast black people are the, are the real racist blimey black eagle i'm black but this has no sense to me this guy isn't the right representation what's the the right representation how? Polyterail 2, black, gay, asylum seeker, tick, tick, tick. You'd think the UK was an African country just from watching British TV now. This got over 200 likes. Uh, Jim says, not just black, gay. Um, Silverback Matt, next will be the first Chinese doctor, Dr. Wu. Not even a good joke. Uh, Dominic Lane, when will this ridiculous nonsense stop? 
uh, Summit to See says, isn't he gay too? It's just bollocks. This is why I'm boycotting all this crap. We've got Linda who went on like a multi-paragraph scree saying that just because you live in Scotland doesn't make you Scottish, even though that's kind of how that works. Uh, Brad Fordian says, I say it again, there is nothing of benefit in multiculturalism for the native Brit. Keep in mind that Doctor Who was originally conceived and thought of by uh, an American. Was Sidney Newman American or Canadian? Either, one, either way, outside the UK, the first director, Waris Hussein, was a gay Indian man. And the first uh, producer showrunner was Verity Lambert, who was uh, the first woman producer of that department for BBC back in the 1960s. Canadian, thank you. I thought it was Canadian, but I've I had a brain fart. But yeah, so uh, there's nothing nothing of benefit in multiculturalism. Doctor Who is a benefit of multiculturalism from its very inception. Uh, and also, have you tried British food? Genuinely tried British food. It's, it's, it's pie and mash. And I like pie and mash, but I don't want it seven times a day. God's sake. Kevin G, we now live in a world where the colour of the skin gets you a job. Dave says, the BBC yet again prove Britain is now an apartheid state? Uh, David Tompkins, the BBC could create a new show with all black actors if it wanted to be diverse. This show is so woke now, Doctor, trying to get off with female assistant non-stop waffle, so a bit of homophobia there as well. What you need to understand here, from the conservative reactionary ideology, is that they don't just consider black people to be, like, suspicious in terms of casting, in terms of being in media. They consider diverse casting to be a form of violence against them. A form of violence against the white children the white people the 14 words the replacement and stuff but this is kind of interesting to see from the talk radio perspective because they're trying very very hard to not be racist even having to cut off charlie peters from talking their guest before he said something horrifically racist uh whilst also having a horrifically racist comment section uh julia if you're so accepting if you're so colorblind when it comes to the casting of people in media why do so many racists love you so unfortunately it does not end there yeah i was told of this channel uh, history debunked um the strange case of ethnicity in british television hello again hello i seldom watch television these days but my wife persuaded me to watch a dramatization of the story of the fellow who pretended to have died following a canoeing accident some years ago which was showing on itv recently we watched the first episode last night on the itv hub which is the... Uh, uh, in the comments, um, Walla Dumrelum, what conservatives do you know that feel that way? All conservatives. Similar to the BBC iPlayer. I found the advertisements showing during the intervals utterly bizarre. Although perhaps I should not have done... Sorry, I'm going to speed this guy up. He's, he's talking very slowly. I'm sorry. Lord knows I've spoken often enough on this channel of the direction in which this country is moving. That is to say, towards the replacement of indigenous culture with something oh, replacement. similar to Okay, that. we got a Nazi. The African-American scene. In the first half hour of the programme I watched were the following advertisements, which I could not restrain myself from making a note of, <laughs> much to my wife's irritation, I might say. The very first was for the National Lottery, and it featured a black guy in a wheelchair, thus scoring highly for including both somebody of African heritage and also a man with a visible physical disability. I, yeah, black people exist and some of them are in wheelchairs. Like, what? <laughs> what, what, like, what is the issue with this, apart from he just exists? Like, what, what's the issue? And yeah, 1.5 speed, this guy's very slow. I'm irresistibly reminded, by the way, of the fantastic double whammy achieved by the BBC the other day, when they announced that not only would the next Doctor Who be black, but that he was also a homosexual. Ticks all the boxes there, no mistake. Mind, I had already had my suspicion. So, yeah, he, he has no arguments other than, oh, he's black and gay. He might be gay, we don't know for certain. As chat said earlier, he's not actually spoke publicly about his like, homosexuality or his sexuality in general. What's the argument? Only demand, demand says, I think his issue is that they exist. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. But it doesn't even have like a veneer of like a reason for it. It's on this score. When I saw a photograph of the fellow in Kuti Gatwa cuddling up to the latest scriptwriter for the show, Russell T. Davis, who is famously gay, I would not... <laughs> famously <him>. gay? <laughs> he walks around with a, with a banner on him. He'd be placing the palm of my hand over another man's cheek in such an affectionate fashion, as can be seen in the thumbnail to this video. Well, that did strike me as rather a clue. So? Anyway, returning to the... <laughs> okay, so it's massively sus to just 
men touching each other. It's okay, that's massively sus. Okay. Advertisements on ITV. Okay. The one after the black man in a wheelchair was for Tanqueray Gin. This features a black woman as the only person to be seen. The next was absolutely weird. It was English heritage encouraging people to visit Stonehenge. The central characters were a black man and woman who showed an enormous interest in this English site and seemed absolutely enchanted by Stonehenge. I have remarked before that one never sees black people at historic sites of this kind, like the Tower of London, museums, castles, stately homes, and so on. Okay, so this is a contradictory narrative that you see from conservatives when it comes to, oh, we have to keep things like um, our heritage centres, we have to keep things like the, uh, the monarchy and stuff like that, because they are for tourism. People from all across the world go see them. So, but it, this guy is also simultaneously saying, oh no, like, people of colour do not go to these heritage sites. Like, what? What? Has anybody watching this ever actually seen a single black person at Stonehenge? Well, I've not been to Stonehenge, but I've seen black people and people of all races and ethnicities go to these, like, his go to historical sites. What the hell? Maybe maybe black people just didn't want to be around you. Maybe maybe they got the vibes and they thought, oh, no, we're not, we're not going near this guy. It seems wildly improbable. After that was an advertisement for Smirnoff Vodka, which uh, had another black man and woman dancing to what sounded to me like archetypal black music or music at least inspired by um, the... Okay, right, no. Right, what we're doing, folks, is that we're going away from this one, but it's very, very funny. In the UK right now, we're going through the cost of living crisis. We're going through one of the biggest uh, attacks on our democracy in, in, my, in my lifetime, at least, where our free speech and rights to protest and everything are being eroded away by a conservative government. And this guy has, like, no care for any of that. This is what's at the top of his mind. He like, he genuinely is trying to watch an ITV drama, and the adverts come on, and he's like, Margaret, bring in some biscuits and a notepad, because I need to talk about the black people in the adverts. Like, that's what this guy's upset about. If you have nothing else in your life that is, like, uh, is, like worth documenting on notepads, then, oh my goodness, you have it so easy. My goodness, what is wrong with this dude? Apart from astonishing racism so yeah we'll we'll close that one uh, i got very only halfway through that one but no arguments there uh, we also have our favorite pathological liar and white supremacist platformer nerd rotic uh, i've not watched this yet but i was given this really timestamp so let's watch this this is him responding to uh, red carpet interviews at the baftas because tv has meant more than ever i think over the last year the last couple of years what has it meant to you um i have just loved seeing the strides taken in terms of representation oh, <laughs> the most intelligent argument he's ever made. Best thing he could have done is that for he's trying really hard to think of an issue with that statement, finds none, and then changes topic. First interview. That first interview where you're going, I'm really grateful to be a doctor. This is an honor. This role is an honor. And I hope I do the best job. It's great. Now, he's not as bad as Jody. He's not sitting there going, you know, all your perspectives got a bit old. I guess lying about what Jody said. Okay, nice. Bet you got old after 30 seconds. Um, I feel like we've all got a lot bolder with the messages and the conversations that we're opening up using TV. RIP Doctor Who, folks. Sorry. I tried. It was the third interview. Oh, sorry, I wanted to give this new black doctor another chance, but sorry, they talked about wanting to make TV with a message, which is something TV has historically never done, except for the past couple of years. Like, never done it before. TV and media, never been used for a message before. Rusty Davis, famously a political writer with nothing on his mind, of course. Nah, I'm out of here. Uh, we're also, I've not watched this one. Uh, this is a channel I've not actually talked about before. This is Mecha Random 42 I see in my suggested uh, her videos quite a bit, but I've never actually watched it before. Let's take a look. This just in, Doctor Who will not be Doctor Woke after all. Oh, interesting. Interesting start. It is not Doctor Woke, it is not Doctor Diversity, it is not a doctor based on all of the marketing and talking points. I am Mecca. Doctor Who will not, not, not be known or or anything we have confirmation according to showrunner russell t davies that this was clearly the very very bestest actor ever for this job and they did no such thing to hire him based on di diversity russell t davies <laughs> shuts down claims that i cannot pronounce this gentleman's name was cast in the show because of diversity however 
However, the media is going to use that to everything that they can. They're going to say he's the first gay. He's the first black. He's the first this. He's the first that. And that is. Yeah, but sorry. Sometimes these milestones get pointed out and added to footnotes and articles. <laughs> I, sorry if basic observation is a bit offensive to you but okay one of the things that they did to jody whitaker which was so unfair to her specifically and women and fans of the show and i'm gonna go out on the limb and say i think this is unfair to the gay community and to the of color community is that even like can we can we stop saying communities because we're all one community we're all people but oh god that's just back. being mad on twitter about everything is the community i'm talking about i don't think it's fair to them that every single I mean, like this article right here, they're using these buzzwords because it's a quote. It's a quote from what Russell's. It's in quotes. Um, are you saying that you don't want them to represent what Russ T. Davis said? Guess what? But and also, the reason he has to respond to this talking point is because of conservatives sell. who Every think, as we've gone through all of these comment sections before, think that this is the only reason that they got hazard. Buzzword, buzzword. buzzword. You get a click, you get a you get a ding, you get a boop, you get a cuz it, it triggers this emotional response in your brain that that either causes you to cheer or jeer one or one way or another. So this is why you see a lot of like YouTube channels using words like cultural marxism, intersectional feminism. Um okay, first one means Jewish, cultural marxism. Second one, intersectional feminism means um, um women do things. Groomers in Hollywood. Groomers in Hollywood means just gay people. All of these things just to kind of trigger this emotional response in our little lizard brains. Because One second, but I, you're doing these buzzwords though. I'm just got I I just got onto the channel. Indoctrinate their children, destroys libs. Brie Larson cancelled by own fans again. Twitter meltdown with J.K. Rowling. Like Mecca Randa, you you do the exact same thing. What what are you doing? Because we are. <laughs> I know, I'm the same thing. I saw that and I'm like, that's that's the first thing that they're going to go to, isn't it? Yeah, that's the first thing conservatives go to. But that's why they have to shut it down at the pass. No, Russell T. Davies claims that he is just, just because he's the best actor who walked into the room. I don't buy it. I think it's because Russell T. Davies knows this guy, knows he's going to show up on time, probably. Probably knows that he... Is we talked about this in the bolstrate video. Is that a white supremacist talking point? Like, he's black, so he probably won't show up for work on time. He's somebody who can count on to deliver the lines the way he wants to write them because he's worked with them before. Which is exactly why Jodie uh, Whittaker was chosen. I was under the impression that Shooter Gatwa and Rusty Davis hadn't worked with each other before. They might have... Have they? Chat, let me... One second. Uh, horrible histories. The last letter from your lover, Barbie, Bob Servant, Stone Maths, Sex Education Master... The no, so they've not worked with each... So where's this come from? Chosen when Christian falls to Oh, I know what she's done. No, she's mixed him up with the 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 black person from It's a Sin. Ah, uh, what's it called? Amari Douglas. Oh yeah, she's absolutely mixed these two up. Yeah, she's mixed them up. Uh, I feel really happy that I can now talk about it because I got cast in February. <laughs> I, I respect the aesthetic though, like. Oh, the screen's over there. I, I respect the, the aesthetic. Oh, he was cast in February. This is when we were getting rumors of like, Ollie Alexander, is that one of them? The other kid from It's a Sin? Yeah, the other kid from It's a... She, she thinks that this, this is Omari Douglas. Or, uh, <clears throat> well, he's not in It's a Sin. He's in the other show that Russell T. Davies does, Sex Education. I can't say that, can I? But, you know, I... Does Sex Education... Does Russell T. Davies work on Sex Education? No. Oh, okay. So she hasn't... Okay. Right, chat. Never let it be said that I am uh, someone who discriminates, okay? I think that is entirely possible for women to be as aggressively stupid as men, okay? We've got dead metal media responding to the 14th Doctor casting. Uh, 14th Doctor Who sucks. Shooty Gatwa is trash. Do not watch. Doctor Who is dead. So imagine my... GM97, Nadine Price's, Doris is proof of that. Yeah, of course. It's like um, in Margaret Tha when Margaret Thatcher was Prime Minister. It was like, oh, great. Women can be just as terrible prime ministers as men can. Awesome. Surprise when I saw the 14th Doctor announcement. Now, putting aside the fact that this individual 
<laughs> I can't even begin to pronounce their fucking name. Parents gave them a straight up gamer tag instead of a name. Okay, well, so if you're not even gonna like hide the racism up top, okay. Um, the grumpy old fan, Shooter Gat was RTD's BBC. Gittin, we would like to say thank you. Thank you to the fan sheep. <laughs> Thank you to the dumb fuck drones and the fucktard trolls. Of course, they're such retards, they probably don't. Okay. That is not your friend. Uh, just a montage with the banner at the bottom. Hello, Grumpies. Well, it seems my last little video caused something of a stir. Can't think why. Do you think it was something I said? Russell T. Gaines, RTD2, has cast. Oh, okay, and they've got Rusty Davis fo face uh, photoshopped on a shirt that says gay Marxist. Uh, for those of you who don't know, in conservative circles, Marxist is code word for Jew. Uh, so we've got a bit of anti-Semitism here as well. The new Dr. Pooh. And his oh. name is Cutie Gaywank. Shooty Gatwick. Shooty Dog Thing. I don't know. He's another one of those with the name that's made up of Scrabble letters. Okay, and also the caption here says shitty gay boy. Now, I see people in the chat saying, why are you talking about this? Why are you talking about this? For one very important reason, and it's the same reason why I covered all of the stuff back when Jodie Whittaker was uh, cast and Jodie Whittaker was announced back in 2017. So, basically, what is going to happen when Shooter Gatwa is actually the 14th Doctor on screen proper is that they're going to be massive cases of, oh, we gave the show a chance. We gave it a chance. We were, but it was just terrible. It was just obviously woke. Just, and we didn't have an issue with the race change or the gender change. We didn't have an issue with any of this. The show was just terrible. So, yeah, it's just a coincidence that they happen to be um, uh, trying to push for unorthodox casting of the Doctor at this point. And the reason for this type of video is firstly just to respond to some of the terrible talking points, but also just to show how blatantly mask off the racism is. And also that when people say we are no longer in a racist society, you can tell them, dude, that's just absolutely dumb and stupid and absolutely not true. This is for documentation purposes, just to show that, yes, the racist audience is here now. The racist audience will continue to be racist. Some of the biggest names in like pop culture commentary and stuff are going to be pushing their racist talking points forward. And... We're going to need to combat it, basically, okay? Because when you had people saying, like, from the very beginning that Jodie Whittaker's casting is going to be terrible and ruined Doctor Who because she's a woman, and then, oh, coincidentally, those people just so happened to also hate the current run of the show, it was kind of obvious what was going to be happening here, wasn't it? Like, like the first step to fixing a problem is acknowledging that there is a problem and that things like white supremacy, flagrant racism, and in some cases just incredibly aggressive stupidity is going to be prevalent in the fandom and we're going to need to be on the lookout for it to call it out when necessary one reason why i did my reaction video to bolstreg recently over the past week i'm not going to uh, kick this particular dead horse okay over the coming days and weeks okay um because uh, you know he's taken time away from twitter and i think that's kind of okay for now is because you need to acknowledge that this is happening and you need to document it. Otherwise, there's the plausible deniability. And we cannot have the plausible deniability when Shooter Gatwood becomes the Doctor later. But one reason why I did these videos, laughing at the world's most racist Doctor Who fan reacting to Bolstrek and his Doctor Who Flux reviews, is not necessarily to convince those uh, the people in the videos themselves. You know, they're far gone. you got people like... Um, like Mecha Random, uh, what is it? Mecha Random 42, who are so aggressively stupid that honestly, I think just talking about them is maybe a form of ableism. You're trying to convince their audience. You're trying to convince the audience. You're trying to, the people who are, tr who are actively being radicalized by these channels, okay? They're the people you want to try and reach, the people who are not quite far gone. I didn't make that video on Bolstrek to convince Bolstrek. I made that video on Bolstrek to try and convince his audience who had not been completely neo-Nazi radicalized by someone who was pretty overt white supremacist talking points. It's simultaneously a depressing coincidence that the day that I dropped this video, Bolstrek left Twitter because his dog passed away. That's sad. You know, feel bad for the dog, of course, and for Bolstrek and his family and stuff for losing uh, a pet, a beloved pet. That's really sad, okay? Also, really, really sad is being a white supremacist on YouTube and trying to radicalize people within the Doc 2 community to hate black people and to hate women and to hate people of color and LGBT people, etc., etc. But also, a day or two after dropping this video, there was a shooting, a mass shooting in Buffalo. And that person in their manifesto 
were using the exact same talking points and rhetoric that Bolstrek did. Great replacement conspiracy theory shit. I think that when people say you talking about this makes you as bad as the like you responding to and talking about Nazis makes you as bad as the Nazis, that is unbearably naive to me because I think you need to be able to call this shit out. And for documentation purposes, that's what I've been doing over the past 40 minutes, maybe a bit longer. 